that which remains continuously changing in time is called asat that which remains unchanging in time is called sat so what is sat what is sat give me an example of sat or a name for sat truth hmm? so truth is sat right truth is sat because sat is defined as that which remains unchanging in time no sir so truth is not sat there is a great difference between satya and sat and that has to be understood mool prakriti is sat you will not find this mentioned or written at most places so it's all the more important that you get this sat is mool prakriti if you want to be even more exact then you should say sat is mool aham vritti the fundamental ego tendency that is sat that does not change and what is asat all the forms that the aham vritti takes keep changing hmm? so houses trees persons places planets all these are asat because over the passage of time we can see them changing what is it that we cannot see changing over the passage of time the mool prakriti itself so that is asat that doesn't change getting it brahm or satya is neither sat nor asat brahm or truth is neither sat nor asat why it remains neither unchanging in time nor does it change over time because it is not there in time at all it is not there in time at all so satya is beyond sat and asat both okay both sat and asat pertain to existence within existence there is the changeable within existence there is the unchangeable truth is the central point of existence it is not within existence it is the origin of existence but not contained in existence all right so even to say that the truth is permanent is a fallacy the truth is not even permanent obviously the truth is not temporary or or changing temporal no at the same time the truth is not even permanent the truth is simply timeless do you get the difference between permanence and timelessness permanence acknowledges time timelessness discards time permanence is not able to transcend time timelessness transcends goes beyond time the truth is transcendental truth is not permanent truth is transcendental clear so that great foundation is the entire existence consisting of its myriad mutable forms as well as its unchanging core 
what is the unchanging core of existence its tendency to exist <laughs> what is the unchanging core of existence its tendency to exist what does existence unfailingly do it exists it may exist in whatever way possible but it exists so that's what remains unchanging that's sat it exists it exists <laughs> you get it and therefore you cannot even say that truth exists i have been having trouble explaining it to people always but if you can get it truth does not even exist truth does not even exist or if you want to say truth exists then you will have to say truth alone exists then you will have to say you don't exist but you say you exist right you say this desk exists this chair exists this wall exists then you must say that truth does not exist because the word existence we are using for everything within time hmm this mic exists the surface exists then you must say truth does not exist or if you want to say truth exists then you must say truth alone exists then you must say none of this exists but if none of this exists then who are you to say all that since you are there to say something about existence therefore you are implying confidence in at least your own existence i am the one who is talking so much about existence so at least i do exist and if you do exist then truth does not all right you and the truth cannot concurrently exist tame do na samay remember that ha huh? the two cannot exist at the same time if you are there then you are there be happy with your own existence don't drag the truth into your universe your universe is just too small it can't accommodate the truth or if you want to talk of truth then first of all have the honesty to talk as nobody you must say i do not exist only the truth does that's too much to ask for no so you would rather say truth does not exist okay so that great foundation truth is at the root of all existence both sat and asat hmm brought elementary and manifested and why do we say that truth is at the root of all existence because existence cannot exist on its own existence cannot exist on its own what you call as existence is just an infinite number of dualistic pairs all the pairs derive their sustenance from their dualistic counterparts all the elements in the pair so you cannot be there without the world the world cannot be there without you you remain incomplete the world remains incomplete you are on a journey the world is on a journey you cannot be here on your own the world cannot be here on its own and this difference is the suffering of mankind truth is that which bridges this distance this useless division 
both of you are really one and both of you arise from a single source and that source is there when the two of you are one therefore the truth is expressed as the common source of both the perceiver and the perceived truth is the destiny and the origin of both the perceiver and the perceived hmm? why we just said destiny and we come across the world supremely desirable that's why it is the destiny the destination because it is supremely desirable you want to reach there you want to reach there it is the greatest and the highest but it is beyond your knowledge you cannot reach there using your knowledge that's the thing with the foundation with knowledge you can you will only keep backing your knowledgeable center there is a knowledgeable center there are things to be known around it and the center of knowledge keeps feeding on all the things that are available to be known the knowledgeable center has no capacity to know where it comes from and what it's really looking for therefore it remains in dark about its own desire therefore the sage says that the truth is the most desirable one and at the same time we remain in darkness about it we do not even know what we want we are extremely unsorted people we act against our own deepest desires getting it you desire it deeply you love it deeply and you act then in a way that violates obstructs and insults your own love why because you operate from the knowledgeable center you ascribe consciousness to the knowledgeable center whereas the center of knowledge is really not conscious at all you see what is information at the most basic level information is memory whenever two elements physical elements interact with each other that results in memory and that's how our consciousness operates it's very material when you say you know something can you know without memory when you say you know something essentially are you not talking of memory <coughs> of course you can argue that it's not only memory it's something beyond memory in terms of intellect your analytical ability and so much and so much but all of that build upon memory right hmm consciousness is a very materialistic play there is no need to even call it as conscious consciousness as we talk of it as we experience it is hardly conscious once you see that once you once you stop giving undue respect to your consciousness you come to the foundation
that's where your deepest desire is met hmm? when your deepest desire is to go beyond the material how will it be fulfilled in the material when is when your deepest desire is to go into a unity how will it be fulfilled through a process of division getting it attention involves knowing your desire the more you know your desire the more you see there is very little of you in the desire it is not your desire at all it is just an inner uprising something swells up like the flow of a stream like a high tide when you have seen where your desires come from you are very close to fulfilling your real desire your real desire is not attainment your real desire is liberation that desire to be liberated unfortunately expresses itself as the desire for a thousand things it's catastrophic the fundamental desire is for liberation from things whereas the expression is in the form of attraction or aversion towards things and if you go close to it investigate it becomes clear it's not the thing that you want it's just that the thing has falsely promised you liberation from all things including itself is that thing really honest in its promise is that thing even capable of carrying out its promise if not then it is unworthy of your desire hmm? 